welcome. Uh, so let's kick today's video off with my car in a way that I've never driven it or heard it before, in automatic and natural mode. That's the most interesting way to start talking about a tune, right? Yeah, we're not gonna do that. So, let's put it in race, put it in manual. This is how I'm used to driving the car. And we'll start talking a little bit about the uh, Squadra tune. I'll go over the different details of it. I'll give you my impressions of it now that I've been living with it for two, three weeks now. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get some of the numbers out of the way now. So the car comes from the factory with 505 horsepower and about 443 pound-feet of torque. The Squadra tune has two different configurations. I went with the maximum configuration. Uh, so my car now has somewhere in the range of 560 horsepower and torque is bumped all the way up to 530 pound-feet from that 443. So the horsepower numbers are very respectable, uh, but those torque numbers are a really big step up. So the numbers aren't the full story of this tune, because really what I was looking for is a tune that gives me, you know, a little bit more power, a little bit more oomph, but also other drivability and livability factors. I wasn't looking for a tune that gave me the biggest horsepower numbers, nor was I looking for a tune that had pops and bangs or a bunch of additional theater around it. It's really important for me to find a tune that I felt like really jived with what the car was originally going for. So I feel like the car is very similar uh, in, in character to what Alfa Romeo delivered it as. But I think everything's just dialed up a bit now. So as long as I've had my car, I've been driving it in a race mode and manual mode. The reason for race mode is mostly because the valves are always open and I want the most sound out of my car. With the Squadra tune, I'm currently in race mode, and let me drop a couple of gears so you can hear. If I were to switch back to dynamic mode, but from race mode, the exhaust valves stay open. So I'll go up a couple of gears. They're still open where they would otherwise be closed from the factory. Also on the subject of race mode, the car is a little bit sensitive in race mode. Squadra claims that Alfa Romeo has most of the power delivered before 50% or around 50% throttle. Um, so super, super sensitive throttle, which makes it a little bit harder to modulate and control. Um, this really manifests when you're on the stock Pirelli tires and the temperatures are lower. Like we're talking about like maybe 40, 50 degrees and you haven't gotten the tires up to operating temperature. The car's really squirrely and having a little bit more room to play with the throttle to either not introduce that oversteer or to be able to drive out of the oversteer is really nice. Now for me, I didn't drive in dynamic mode mostly because of the valves. Um, but there's also a difference in how the power is delivered in dynamic mode versus race mode. Now with the Squadra tune, I believe they're claiming that the throttle mapping and sensitivity is equal between race and dynamic. I'm not necessarily convinced that it's actually equal, but I think it's a lot closer. So a key reason that I would use dynamic mode now and that I have used it recently is when the tires aren't, say, hot, but maybe they're a little bit warm, uh, it's easy to spin in race mode. However, I'll do a quick pull getting onto the highway here. And in dynamic mode, this is much better. So my point being, I can now use dynamic mode when I feel like I might be traction limited. And just want to be a little bit safer, but I still wanted to do some spirited driving and I want to have all of the sound. This seems like such a silly thing in this car, but I mean, it, this is a performance sedan, so it is something that should be very livable. And one of the frustrations that I have with race mode is it gives you no information other than the speed and like the gear and your range. Uh, but if I bump back to dynamic, sure, I've got the music information and audio track and other details like that. But for me, being able to see the temperature is super nice and being able to see the time is, is handy. So, you know, small quality of life improvements through the adjustments that Squadra has made to dynamic mode that make dynamic mode a more exciting mode to be in without all of the risk of race mode. So, 
I'm on the highway, just cruising a little bit, gonna go for a little bit of a mountain drive. And so I feel like it's a decent time to drop down to natural mode. And I'll bump it over to automatic because this mode's not very exciting anyway. And I'll talk a little bit about what the tune is doing in this mode, which makes it something that I might consider using in the winter if it's slick outside. Um, there are a few adjustments to advanced efficiency as well. Um, but as far as natural mode goes, so in general, you know, from the factory, horsepower is reduced in natural mode. However, natural mode and advanced efficiency mode apparently have cylinder deactivation, where it'll deactivate three of the cylinders while you're cruising. I genuinely have not driven in these modes, and so this is not something that I've ever noticed, but I could see how it would be annoying to be driving this car and then have the cylinders deactivate, and then you give it a little bit of gas, they reactivate, and just the change in sound seems like it'd be a little bit weird. That's generally it for the quality of life improvements with the car. Most people that are interested in the tune are interested in the tune from the power perspective. And so let's go ahead and we'll transition into talking about that now. I'll give my impressions after having driven the car for a little while. And yeah, let's do it. For the first several hours of driving the car, uh, I was just trying to be careful and make sure that I got everything back together correctly. A uh, little bit sketched out by <laughs> me being the person taking my car and ECUs out and putting it all back together, but uh, fortunately everything worked out great, but you know, it's a little bit reluctant to really step on it too much for the first, you know, little bit of driving. And then as I got on it, I was like, okay, cool. So that's, you know, we're talking about in the range of a 10, 11, 12% power bump over factory. I was like, all right, that feels good. That that feels right, you know, that stepped on it. I was like, yeah, this feels quicker. It's not like out of this world difference or anything like that, but that's kind of what I was going for. So with that in mind, I was, I was happy with the power increase. Um, I wasn't overwhelmed by it. But I think what I was doing for those first several miles in testing this stuff out was my brain was still calibrated to the old throttle response. So I wasn't digging very deeply into the pedal. So I kind of tried to remind myself of that the next few times I was out driving. And wow. So look, yeah, you know, 10% is not a big number, but the, the, the feeling, I think, of the extra torque is really, really significant. And just the increase in power is appreciable, right? Like it's not major, but it was definitely more than I originally thought that it was. And so the first couple of times that I really got into it after, you know, reminding myself that of the throttle response, I was super impressed with the power. And the traction is good. Like it, you know, it doesn't feel like it's, it's losing traction any worse than it did factory. In fact, you know, with these tires, the Pilot Super Sports on the car, traction isn't really something that I'm thinking about. Uh, at any of the temperatures that I've experienced since I got the car. And so, you know, save for being around freezing, I'm not really worried about traction for the most part anyway. So it's nice to know that the tune is not so dramatic that it's making me worry about traction as I exit a corner. But you put your foot into this thing now and it it goes. It, it was already a car that pushes you back in the seat, but that little extra oomph really makes it feel awesome. But it's not such a dramatic number change that I feel like this is out of the car's like capabilities. You know, cars like this are engineered around a certain horsepower figure, uh, the chassis and everything is considered with those numbers in mind. And when you get to tuning a car, it's really easy to go way out of the parameters that the OEM considered. I feel like 560 horsepower is plenty for this car's chassis and just the overall setup. So I'm on a little bit of a mountain road now, I'm just kind of navigating around cyclists and stuff. Uh, it's a Saturday morning as I film this, and so there's definitely people out, and you know, I'm not one to like floor it up and down a mountain, but it's nice to have a curvy road not too far from the city. But the power for a street car, the power for a car that is already more powerful than you need on the road on a regular basis is 
a really nice improvement. And you just really put your foot into it. You, you really do get that extra power. So if you don't stay too deep into the throttle, uh, it's still really sensible. So I think it's probably the case that the increase in torque is really what I'm experiencing that is, that is the most dramatic change. But at speed on the highway, which I think is probably not the most fun way to drive a car on the road. Like I don't really care about my speeds in excess of 80 miles per hour. But if you get into the throttle at speed, the car pulls way harder and it's super, super, super noticeable at that point. However, you're talking about going to jail speeds and just generally dangerous speeds anyway that I don't think are that exciting. I think, you know, I'd rather get up to a decent speed and in corner and have fun like driving a car like that. So with the Squadra Tune, one of the things that I was wondering is was I gonna give up on driving in race mode most of the time? Concretely, the answer there is no. I think that the adjustments to dynamic mode are very significant and make that mode a lot better. However, the adjustments to race mode also make that mode much better, uh, more predictable, and feel a lot safer. And so I think I'm probably mostly gonna stay in this mode, but it's nice to actually have the option of bumping over to dynamic mode should it be warranted. You know, if I'm cruising on the highway or something, dynamic mode is more interesting. More appealing than it used to be. Another caveat of this tune, if you haven't seen, it's not a very widely shared thing, but on Instagram, I added a reel where I talk about how I get the Quadrifolio to make a few more interesting noises. Um, and what I mean by that is the car already has kind of an aggressive upshift noise, but on the downshifts, occasionally you'll get like a nice crack. Um, it doesn't always happen. And in fact, it's, it's generally pretty rare. However, uh, I found out that if you downshift, if you click the paddle and you get into the throttle at the same time as you downshift, kind of like if you're thinking about rev matching a downshift in a manual car, you do get the benefit of increasing the likelihood that you'll get one of those downshift cracks. With the tune now, I'm able to reproduce those a little bit more. Uh, however, the number of times, I mean, this is just kind of now a normal part of my driving routine because I'm obnoxious and I love the sound of the car and I love the sound that those downshifts make. But I do feel like the frequency is significantly increased. It is busy on this small mountain today. So, my final thoughts, I definitely think the tune is worth it. I actually think it's a really good bang for your buck. It seems like it is on the cheaper end of the tunes. Uh, however, it seems super well refined, super well considered, and it exactly fits what I wanted out of this like OEM Plus theme. So if you're a little bit apprehensive about a tune, maybe you've never done one before, um, or even just in general, like you want to retain the standard characteristics of your car. Um, I think this does a good job of improving the standard characteristics while retaining what the Quadrifolio is and how it feels and the overall experience with it.
So then the final thing that I want to talk about that I've gotten a lot of questions about is uh, people have asked me about the tune. What tune did I go with? Um, yeah, I refer them to the Alfisimo website for details about the Squadra tune. And then I get follow up on, um, I know that you're going to do downpipes. And my tune is already accounting for the fact that I'll have downpipes. Um, so what does that mean power-wise? Um, in my case, the Squadra tune in Going Catless with downpipes is not tuned for any extra power there. Um, so I don't know if, if naturally you get a little bit more power or just what the different characteristics are when you have downpipes. I've never actually had them before. I'm excited to experience that for the first time. But uh, Squadra claims there is not an increase in horsepower through going catless. I'm not sure what the nuance in that is, right? Because I know that it is a less restrictive setup, so maybe they just do not tune for additional power considering that additional flow. I'm actually totally okay with this because I never, you know, went with downpipes or even catless downpipes for that matter for horsepower reasons. There's always specifically a sound oriented concern and so this is fine by me you know I really truly want nothing more power wise from the car would I take it maybe um, but it was not a factor in my decision making so if you're looking for maximum horsepower or anything like that this is probably not the tune that you want to go with you probably already knew that anyway um, just because there are definitely tunes that'll take you beyond 560 horsepower however this is the tune that gave me exactly what I was looking for out of the car. Just that little bit of additional power, and I actually think refinement over what came from factory, or at least predictability. <laughs> yeah, that power is plenty. We're still talking about more power than the Julia GTA and GTA M are coming with. So, you know, if that number seems low, like these, these factory race car for the street uh, equivalents of this car are still coming with less power. I feel like everyone needs to experience these cars, even in their stock form, but also experiencing them in the right driving environment. Like cruising around in the mountains is just the ideal way to enjoy any car, right? All right, so we'll get on the highway, give a little gas. Yeah, I just don't see how that's not quick enough, right? <laughs> oh, it's so fun. It's so good. Yeah. This is truly such a special car that I think people are sleeping on way too much, but, you know, more, uh, more enjoyment for those of us who have one. So now I have to do the annoying typical YouTuber thing where I get on here and I ask you to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. That stuff is super, super helpful with YouTube and the way that videos get promoted. So, um, you know, it sounds like something that everyone just says, but uh, I really appreciate it if you do like and subscribe to this stuff. It, you know, gives me more motivation to keep doing this. I think it's a lot of fun, but if I know that other people are getting value out of it, that's even more reason for me to keep going. So, thanks again. See you guys in the next video. We'll talk about the downpipes then. We'll do a lot of a lot of driving and a lot of sound clips there. But I hope this has been informative. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions about the Squadra tune or anything else. I'll drop a link to Alfisimo's uh, listing for the tune on their website. Oh yeah, you know what? I said in the last video that I was going to show the new puppy. And I'll show both of my dogs. So here's a clip of them.